Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is Monday. It is March 23rd, and I wish we had some better news from the markets. Uh, apparently, the Dow has opened down like something like 600 points, but we'll check that a little bit later on in this block coming up in just a minute. But as Steph's here this morning, good to Hi. see you again. Good to see you. A uh, number of restaurants doing what they need to do to try to stay afloat uh, yes, from coast to coast, including right here in Texas. That's right, a lot of curbside happening yep. right now. And this is a story out of uh, downtown Los Angeles, California, but it's going to resonate because a lot of companies even here in San Antonio are doing something very similar to this. Yeah, so they are actually putting together emergency taco kits and it comes with a side of toilet paper. There you go. There's a video right there, or a picture right there of what they're handing out. Yeah, this is at Gorilla Tacos in Los Angeles, California. Uh, the uh, co-owner said she and her co-workers compiled an all-in-one emergency taco pack complete with 30 eggs and four rolls of TP scrounged from their vacant restrooms. And along with the TP, the kits feature a whopping five pounds of roasted chicken, five pounds of carne isada, mm -hmm. quarts of green and red salsa, tortillas, onions, cilantro, rice, and beans. The Tex-Mex team said that they MacGyvered the taco fillings from surplus leftovers that had accumulated during the COVID-caused customer drought there in Los Angeles. Yeah, they say that the emergency kits allows them to cover their employees' salaries and health insurance. That's right. And they are paying dividends by Tuesday uh, morning of last week. Gorilla Tacos had sold 74 kits. They're $150 each on the company's website. But they said it's all about keeping us healthy and alive. And the plan to start selling cold brew coffee kits at another vendor as well. If you're curious about uh, Gorilla Tacos and their emergency taco kits, again, this is an L.A. thing. If you happen to be there, for some bizarre reason. Uh, it's pickup only at 7th and Mateo near downtown Los <laughs> Angeles. That's pretty cool. I know some local restaurants have put together, I don't want to say kits, but packages. They have. You know, which, which has been nice, but with a side of toilet paper, wouldn't that be so nice? And it's being done. Uh, the Strange family, oh, okay. uh, Don Strange Ranch, they've oh, been doing cool. Yeah, cool. was okay. part of their, their meals as well. And we saw something else here. What was it? Uh, an Oregon distillery is actually coming to the rescue of hygiene freaks. Talk about improvising with your business. Uh, this uh, distillery, they're selling homemade hand sanitizer. Is that Tito's vodka? Uh, it's another one. I don't know. I don't think it's Tito's because oh, isn't okay. Tito's here in Texas? San I mean, Austin, excuse me. Austin, right. yeah. Yeah, so I don't to this one, but they ah. moonshined this hand sanitizer with leftover vodka ingredients. A lot of people getting creative at this time. Yes. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. President Trump announcing the National Guard will be deployed to the three states hit the hardest by the coronavirus outbreak, New York, California, and Washington state. The federal government has deployed hundreds of tons of supplies from our national stockpile to locations with the greatest need. Senate Democrats slammed the brakes on a stimulus package aimed at boosting the economy struggling from the coronavirus pandemic. Legislation has many problems. Crowded beaches in California, an ocean full of boat parties in Miami, large gatherings in Central Park in New York. Your decision to not physically distance yourself may kill someone. In Italy, a grim new reality. All movement is now banned. Nearly 5,500 people in that country have died from the coronavirus. The prime minister calls it the worst crisis since World War II. In Dallas County, a big shakeup to everyday life coming in the form of a countywide shelter in place order. County Judge Clay Jenkins issued that order following the deaths of two more people. Guadalupe County is reporting its second COVID-19 case. Officials say the individual is experiencing mild symptoms and isolating at home. The CDC is expected to issue new guidance today, making it possible for people to return to work faster. The new guidance will affect people exposed to the coronavirus who have not shown symptoms. Three men and a woman were traveling in the 6700 block of Hickory Springs around 1245 this morning when they pulled over to put in an address on their GPS. Now that's when police say a black vehicle pulled up and fired several shots toward them. Workers at this British hospital created a dance routine singing Don't Stand So Close to Me by the police. I love this guy claims he ran a marathon on his balcony. He's in isolation and says he finished the 26 miles by running back and forth across his 23-foot-long balcony. You do the math. He plays first, too. Oh, no, I could not do that. And I couldn't either. Hey, I just want to put this bug into your ear. At the very end of today's newscast, closer to the top of the hour, we're going to tell you about a way to 
calculate how long the toilet paper you have on hand is going to last you. It's an That's easy right. way to do it. And I've already done the calculator, okay? So I already know <laughs> you went through how the long my 10 rolls are gonna last. All right. We just wanna Hope, share the wealth. Hoping for good news. Oh, it's good news. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> Let's go outside with Live Camp, not good news. Uh, we were hoping the fog situation would improve, but Justin has an update on our dense fog advisory. It's gotten worse. Yeah, they did issue a dense fog advisory. That's gonna go until 10 o'clock this morning. You can see the fog. Yeah, we're looking down at Central Catholic. You cannot see anything this morning. The fog has really rolled in and it's gotten a little bit worse here in San Antonio. So let's first take a look at visibility. We're down to uh, about three tenths of a mile here in San Antonio, so close to zero. Uh, Pleasanton, same story in your brothels. It's really up and down that I-35 corridor where we're dealing with some issues also out towards Rock Springs. And uh, we're going to see temperatures near 80 today and I do think we'll see eventually a little bit of sun this afternoon, but we got to get through this fog and cloudiness first. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, some more of the, the numbers here with the dense fog advisory. It goes until 10 o'clock this morning. You see where it's lined up along I-35 there. Pleasanton, San Antonio, New Braunfels, up towards Austin. Here locally around Bear County, about a quarter of a mile, just about anywhere you go. Uh, Bernie Sage is at three quarters of a mile, but most of Bear County is underneath this fog as it stands right now. 61 Comfort, 62 Bandera, 66 at Randolph. And I do want to pass along too, mold has jumped into the very high category, it's at 16,400. That is a huge jump. So if mold is something that bugs you, be aware. The rain over the weekend really, really kicked it up. Uh, it also knocked the oak pollen out of the air, which is nice. Uh, forecast for today, again, up near 80 by 5 o'clock. We'll see those clouds clear out a little bit. And we'll go partly cloudy, I think, later this afternoon and this evening. We've got some real uh, big-time temperatures on the way, some heat headed our way. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And outside right now, we know many of you are home with the kids or working from home, but some of you may have to run an errand or two. And again, here's a better picture of the fog out there. There's 1604 at Colebra, but we've seen the fog and the low clouds showing up and affecting visibilities pretty much on cameras all across the metro area. But we're going to keep an eye on it for you as we typically do. Top stories we're following for you today right here at KSAT 12. We're still waiting to learn the name of a man killed overnight in a shooting. Police say the shooting happened just before 3 this morning downtown in the 1100 block of North Alamo. Now, according to police, two men in masks walked up to the truck, pulled out a gun and shot the man inside. The man was found unresponsive when EMS arrived and was taken to a nearby hospital. Right now, police are still looking for the suspects and a possible motive. And this afternoon, we expect to get another update on the number of coronavirus cases here in Bear County. Right now, the number sits at 45. Metro Health says a woman in her 80s with underlying health problems died from COVID-19 over the weekend. Meanwhile, 45 others dealing with the diagnosis, 26 believed to have contracted the virus through travel. Another seven got it from someone who was positive. The county now has 10 community spread cases or people who were infected within our community and health experts are still trying to figure out how other people got it. Joint Bay San Antonio Lackland continues to ramp up safety precautions after more people tested positive for COVID-19. The base now limiting gate access and is asking drivers to approach all gates with closed windows. Now IDs will be scanned through the window before entry. Some delays are expected as a result. Comes as two additional people at JBSA have been infect infected by the virus, bringing the total 13. Officials with JBSA say a contact tracing investigation is underway. Well, during this pandemic, schools in and around San Antonio are closed and schools with schools. There are classes, sports, even uh, help with mental health. And starting this morning, Northeast ISD has phone lines and virtual lines available for counseling questions or concerns. Our Max Massey joins us live from Churchill High School. Max, how many counselors do they have out there this morning? Good morning, guys. There's a handful of counselors here. Every high school actually has counselors on hand this morning. No calls just yet, but we are joined here. Kathy Johnson, a staying counselor. Right off the bat, what exactly is a STAND counselor? A STAND counselor stands for Student Teacher Assistant Network, and we are basically a intervention and crisis counselor on our campus. There are STAND counselors on every high school and in middle school. Why is it so important to convey the message of mental health, especially during these times, during the epidemic? 
this is really a hard time right now for a lot of us, for parents and for students. And mental health has always been a priority, but even more so right now. I think it's really important for our students and our parents to know that we're just a phone call away. Um, I know a lot of us have already reached out students and our parents are reaching out to us through email but this is another way that we can kind of be there for our students it's not physical in our office but we can be doing some counseling on the phone just to help give an encouraging word uh, maybe answer a question especially for some of our high school seniors they're worried about things like graduation classes college things like that and we just want to be there to let them know that we're still here for you even though you can't see us um, it's been really exciting to see counselors reach out in many creative ways like zoom uh, that's been really fun to do um, I also have seen some uh, counselors reach out doing a Google Classroom lesson uh, for students to access because social emotional learning is so important right now. We need to really make sure that we realize this is the most important thing is taking care of our kids' mental health. Now, mental health, obviously, so crucial during the pandemic. How can families and how can students reach out to you guys? Well, every day, starting today, we have support on our lines, our phone lines. Uh, there's three counselors at every high school, and that is where they can just call in if they have anything that they need to talk about. Some of our teenagers really have a hard time opening up to their parents, and so we want this to be available for them so they can kind of talk to us about some anxiety or maybe some feelings of isolation or even some of them may be going through some depression right now. It's hard to be at home. It's hard to not be with your friends. And so sometimes just talking to someone in a confidential manner, we can really be there to support them. And that's what we want to do. We want them to know that even though we don't see you every day right now, we will soon. And we want you to know that we are always going to be here. A phone call, an email, a Zoom away. We are here for our students. And I just want to tell all the students and parents, please don't forget that we are here to help you during this difficult time. And we will not leave you. And we will get through this. And we will be stronger and just to keep the faith just to keep the faith. All right, Kathy, thank you so much. And guys, coming up at 9.30, we're gonna to talk to more counselors and we have an important message for the families of these students. Mark, Stephanie. Great messages yes. of uh, reassurance for sure. Max Massey live at Churchill High School up on the yes. north side. Thanks, Max. Thank you, Max. And the bus delivery for meals at East Central ISD begins today. Sure does. As a second option for families that require meals, buses will be stopping at specific locations for your convenience today through the end of the week. Lunchtime between 11 and 1. Parents still have the primary option of doing curbside at all ECISD campuses. And meals include lunch and breakfast for the following morning. They are available for those 18 and younger. For a look at all the locations and times, just visit our website at kset.com. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is holding a week-long community blood drive this week. The goal of the drive to build up a 20-day supply amid the coronavirus outbreak. And the drive will be at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. all week long. Donations are by appointment only. Now we have all that information again on our website at kset.com. And if you're a nurse or healthcare worker, listen up. A local car wash is saying thank you this week with a free car wash. Queen Bee Car Washes saying you can pull up to any one of their seven locations around town. And when you get there, just honk your horn. Do not push the attendant button and show them your badge through the window. So the offer will last until next Monday, March 30th. People are like, where, where was that again? <laughs> Queen, Queen Bee Car yes. Washes. Yes. We know you have, we have your attention now. But a oh, great thing for our, That's cool. our was, frontline defenders in the medical profession. It's very, very nice. And I, I was looking, there's one up on Nacogdoches. I have to text my friend about that. Hey, back to the TP calculator, which we're going to mm -hmm. revisit at the end of the newscast. <laughs> I was told that I forgot to ca calculate my son is home for college now. Ah, uh, so. yes. If you have roommates or people with you, that's more toilet paper. I forgot. Mm -hmm. So this isn't going to last as long as I thought. New numbers. <laughs> that's right. A developing <laughs> situation at my house. Nine